Good luck. Welcome back. We're playing uh, Shogi Ladder Week 51. Uh, volume's a little loud, so let me damp it a bit. And yeah, I'll just give you my thoughts as we play the game. Uh, I intend to play a third Falrick strategy, so we'll see if I stick with that. Or if I switch to like Cheerful Central Rook or something, but I think I'm intending to play a Swinging Rook. Uh, against this opponent. So, I'm trying to remember. There's quite a few more orders that are possible, but yeah, I think this is the opening I used to play a lot on this server. Um, after playing 4th File Rook, I started playing this quite a bit. So, interesting move ordering. I wonder if there's any gain or advantage for me uh, to advance this pawn right away. That seems dangerous. Let me play something a touch safer. Um, pawn push, pawn push, pawn push, takes, takes, silver up. Yeah, there's no hurry to move my rook right now, I think. So let's continue building Mino Castle. Um, and assert that we're going to have some room for our king to run at the end of building the castle. And yeah. I'm not seeing a clear weakness, so I'm choosing to uh, just build half Mino and then reassess after that's built. I see they've they're on their way to building, or they have built Boat Castle. I'm not sure what their rook's intention is. Okay, I did remember to show the 81 dojo badge in the lower right. So I've played some games where my opponent has brought their rook out and then sacrificed it on this 4-4 four, four square. Um, or I guess in this case that's 6-6. Six, six. I wonder if I should try to do such a thing. It might be situational in the event that they choose to play a static rook opening that in once they start pushing this pawn maybe that makes this plan make more sense or something um one thing i'd normally be afraid of would be a rapid attack but i don't see how my opponent could orchestrate such a thing right now because they pushed uh, the 6-6 six, six pawn. So I'm not sure like how they build a rapid attack without radically changing their strategy. Right, so they solidify their castle. I solidify mine. Okay. Um, hmm. All right, I think this is fine. Right, so I somewhat and oh, right, so they've defended 6-6 six, six here. So now they're considering uh, a more solid castle, as am I. Yes, so we both built, both of us had built this same castle. Um, they're still waiting for me to make some decision somewhere.
Hmm. So there's a, uh, a formation called the Quick Ishida formation. Um, I think I'm playing the extremely slow Ishida formation since I've taken forever to set it up. Um, hmm. This raises a question. So they moved their bishop off of this long diagonal. Um, the question is why? Uh, yeah, I don't understand. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I've got some pressure here for sure. There's something I don't quite understand about what's going on here. So now this blocks the bishop, at least until the gold general moves again. Um. So now what? Oh. Well, that's interesting. So this knight blocks this diagonal. It certainly does. Um, but since they have no pawn in hand, I can do something aggressive with the bishop out and back. I'll probably bring the rook over. This looks... Very strong, on account of them not having a pawn in hand. If they had a pawn, I would have something to be concerned about. Um, I need to be careful here. Oh, I need to be careful because it's so easy to give them a pawn in hand and ruin all of this. Well, if I push this pawn, as I've been planning, if they move their rooks, I guess they defend the lance. Yeah, I don't have a crushing attack, and I have to retreat. I can't trap my bishop. I need to play some degree of caution. All right. Oh, yes, there's this way they could collect a pawn as well. Right, right, right. Okay. Um. Okay, we're gonna play this and force the rook to defend the lance.
and give my rook somewhere to go. Oh, I missed that their silver can just climb up the board. Um, hmm. That's awkward. That's super awkward. Okay, what do I do? Um... Hmm. Wow. So I fouled this up just a bit. Now my bishop has to retreat somewhere. Um, think this is a reasonable place for it. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Mm, this is so awkward. I don't see a good move here. Their bishop is better than my bishop, so I need to close this diagonal. This is, again, super awkward, but, like, I need to play something, and I don't know what to play. Alright, we're just gonna let this play out, because I'm kind of out of ideas. Um... That doesn't look right. Oh! Okay. That looks more correct than it did a minute ago. Alright. Well, that sucks. Um... Hmm.
I need to try to return this favor, but it's not going to go well. I'm not sure what my point is here, to be honest. Other than, I'm at this point, I'm kind of playing emotionally. Well, no, there is something of a point to it. Um, it's that I can deny their Rook the ability to easily activate. Um... Yeah, no, that's a fork. Okay. Well, I'm flustered, but what do I do? <laughs> um, I guess I'll try to keep my rook on this file in case it opens. I don't expect it to open, but in case it does, I'm ready. Okay, so we know that he's committing his pawn over here. Um, okay. Guess we'll run this way. Um... I need to continue trying to delay promotion of their Rook. But I don't have an attack of my own. Um... I'm not sure what to do at this point. I need to break their castle. My odds of breaking that, and in general my odds of surviving this seem very low, but I have to try to do something. Yeah, they should just promote over here, I guess. I mean, there's a lot of things they could do. I'm not sure which of the many things they could do is best, but I'm trying to do something. It seems very difficult for me to activate my pieces.
Oh, bishop takes is not check. I thought bishop takes was check. Um, that's close enough to check, honestly. Um, because then I could take here. They take back and I get two pieces for two pieces. I'll get two pieces and a pawn for two pieces. Um, Yeah, if I allow them to have an open file, to just place a pawn in front of my rook. So I have to slow this down. Attempts to grab material are not profitable. The fact that I'm going to have to place my pawns to make this happen is unfortunate. Because that limits my options for future pawn placements. Um, but yeah, now we're going to clear some space for my rook on this side of the board. They're not taking my pawn. I mean, there's no reason for them to take it, but... It's... There goes my plan. Um... Yeah, so that's quite fast. Um... There's not a whole lot I can do in this situation. Uh, they're threatening to take the bishop, so we could have the world's saddest bishop, I guess. Guess we're gonna have the world's saddest bishop. It's okay. Hmm. Nice. Okay, so that's a promoted silver. It's such a sad position. Oh, what? Why would you do such a thing? Um, let's go back.
Again, there's not a lot I can do here. Um, yeah, I can take this promoted silver, so I should. Or it takes my gold. Uh, that hurts. I have to go back. Um, hmm. I have to do something. Yeah, it's a sad move. It's okay. If we didn't have sad days, would we ever have happy days? All right, we'll transition our way back into playing Mino Castle, I guess. Um, Yeah, my edge of my attack on the side of the board is not effective. So I need to do something else. There's really no point in defending anymore. Um... Okay, uh, yeah, no, this is lost. All right, thanks for the game. Well, that was something. Yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> Not that I even had uh, a huge attack in the first place, but yeah. Uh, I got clocked so bad. Um, so, reversal's kind of, I don't know, maybe not the right word, but... 
Um, yeah, so... Uh, Here's we both play pretty patiently here. Uh, I've studied the... Uh, okay. Oh, I see. So he's like way, way ahead of me in his study. Because I've played this, I've watched some videos, but I've not like put a formal regimen into how I study this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, not so. I mean, so. Yeah, this idea here about like allowing that. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. I'm like, um, <laughs> no, but it's fine after I push the pawn. Okay. Uh, oh, he's played this quite a few times before. Yeah, looks quite interesting. Um, I've tried to play similar things, and I've gotten absolutely smashed when I tried to do similar things. But, um, okay, if it works for you, that's impressive. I see he's typing something. Ah, uh, he awaits my attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder, maybe I should delay my attack if he's just waiting. I wonder. Um, so, like, there's a lot of moves I could do to improve my position before I start attacking. Um, so maybe I try something like this? I don't know. I mean, how many times? Oh, okay, that's clever. And then I could play something like this to shut out the knight. Okay, that makes sense, but still, I've got this just barely covered. Alright, so yeah, that's the trade-off here. So that he can still do this even if I don't attack. He can still uh, find some initiative here. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so if you get a lead of castling, um, yeah, oh, okay, if he gets a lead of castling where he started to counterattack, he, he would have been better in this. Or when he started a counterattack, he would have been better. Yeah, this is tricky. I've not seen anything quite like this, and I like that it's such a such a repeatable setup. Uh, so, position where it goes bad is the five five bishop. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, 
Obviously, uh, game shows otherwise. Uh, so, yeah, I need to keep my bishop pointing toward their king. Because the king's not going to move around everywhere like the rook does. And they did a very good job activating their rook. <laughs> yeah. You don't get to toot on for nothing, so. Yeah, you have to enjoy something, and he enjoys counterattacking. Yeah. I'll have to study your games. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um. Uh, yeah, I can do without flattering him. Um, but yeah, early on, when I tried to learn how to play Shogi, I tried pretty much everything. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Give him the hat so he can show whatever. Um, I was thinking of putting up the gold to take this. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I... I assumed either that or the silver, but probably the gold. Because moving the silver is too dangerous. Then he realizes that he could just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a very, very strong bishop advance that I did nothing to stop. Um, so, yeah, that's just... There's not much I could have done. Okay, yeah, actually I should have sacked here. I thought about it. I saw this and didn't like it, but... The game continuation sucked so much more. Uh, yeah. I was much too proud to actually play it, but now I had to do this. Yeah. I guess I've been playing too many speed games, uh, not enough serious games, and that's what's led to me just not evaluating positions before I go play stuff. Um, okay, yes, no, that makes... well, oh. Hmm. Uh, this is not good. I'm making all the bad shapes today. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I hadn't even thought about that, but I lose control of that very critical square here. I mean, yeah, my position's desperate, but uh, I need that square. So that's the pattern of this analysis is, oh, I missed this. Oh, I missed this. I missed basically everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Probably can't afford to give up the silver, because, like, here, uh, just I have no activity, and, yeah, this, even my no activity keeps getting worse and worse.
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm kind of extremely busted here. Um, yeah. So... Yep. That covers the one escape hatch I created earlier. So I did play reasonably, at least I played with reasonable time management, but I just was like completely blind in terms both of evaluating the position um, and in terms of uh, actually seeing the concrete threats. So. Yeah, actually, because we played our kings to the same side. Yeah, then the static rook player, well, yeah, they have two targets to aim at. I have one target to aim at, so I need to attack. And <laughs> so this is why they enjoy this opening, it's because it allows them to counterattack. Oh boy. I need to find something to play against this. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it seems to solve all the problems that I had looking at other similar left side king openings. Um, so that's to say I'm missing something. The correct move is to, oh, to actually do the issue death formation. Yeah, like, because he played this really irregular opening, that really spooked me. So I thought there was just, like, something I didn't know. Um... Yeah. time I uh, yeah uh, thanks for the game and the lesson uh, I got really schooled this game obviously during the game you saw me miss all these ideas and then um, after the game we had the lesson so, yeah. I got schooled. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, do 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 have a nice day, etc. Uh yeah, wow. That was special. Yep. Ooh, okay. That stung just a bit. Well, hopefully that shows you what the difference between a low one don and a high two don on 81 Dojo is uh, experience. <laughs> experience and me, in this case, having
quite a few moments where I just had no idea what I was doing. But yeah, I think this may or may not be fine. Um, it accelerates the game. It's probably actually reasonable here, I think. But then I need to follow that by playing Ishida style attack. And for those unfamiliar, what this means is um, here you bring out the rook, bishop, oh, sorry, and the knight. Uh, so this... Do I have this wrong? I probably have this wrong. Well, anyway, I'm trying. But play something like this, get all the pieces active. Because you have only one target to aim for. They can aim for either the rook or the bishop. So it's important to uh, play very actively. And I played passively and got crushed. So, yeah. Oh, before the pawn trade. So I want to hold the pawn trade in reserve here and do Ishida style first. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and then we bring this back, and I think it's bishop up, knight up. I think. Hopefully I have that right. And then, I don't know what the silver's ever supposed to do, but I should study more Ishida-style attacking stuff. Ah, our teacher's back. Thanks for the review. <laughs> yeah. Because clearly I, I... I mean, I have some passion here, but yeah. Knowledge, not so much. <laughs> been a while. Uh, oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to follow along. I think I follow, but then, like, I'm, I don't know. Oh! Okay. Yeah, that shows what I know. Okay, so you, you don't even have to, like, yeah, that makes sense. So I don't even have to, like, play high Mino and all that. Like, yeah. By Pawn Trade, there's something about that. Right, and then back here, they line up this. Oh, and this is why... Okay. Yeah, they've got this square. Yeah, okay, that's really cool. Now I understand what's so awesome about this. Yeah. So I'm giving a move when I exchange here, and getting the pawn into hand in this case is not useful, as it might be in some other positions. Or rather, giving them a free move is definitely not good for me. Ah... Uh... Okay, that helps. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, because this leads to the third file rook, as you point out. Um, right, so yeah, I control this space here. So he's forced to... Yeah. Well, oh! Okay. Yeah, he's not even threatening to break this open. Right. I've had so many other positions where I should trade pawns, but here getting the pawn in hand is not relevant. I need the space because, like, yeah, you've got you've got this pointing this way, and yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, the idea behind this opening. Cool. Alright. That helps a lot. Yeah, I thought I understood, and then, like, as I'm trying to explain it, I realize I don't really get it. But now I see. So that was our key idea here. I missed the key concept. Yeah. So, giving up space here is giving up my only advantage. I kind of need that advantage here. Alright. That helps. Yeah, this reminds me of some chess openings I've played, where you get a space advantage and you just enjoy it. And 
Um, if you don't enjoy it, your position gets overrun. So, uh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. This is really clever. Um, I know I'd seen other castles uh, and some YouTube videos where they mentioned look, all the places you could like play Silver Crown, you could play the king in front of the lance, you could put your king all kinds of places. Um, but no, this looks like high Mino uh, with the bishop here. Yeah, it's quite reasonable. It takes time to build this, but I gave him time because I don't quick attack. Because I don't know how to quick attack. <laughs> but I have to learn. Or I have to play this space game and then um, play patiently and play it well. Which is probably more in, against this particular thing. Um, if I play a quick attack, I'm playing right into his knowledge base. So either I gotta really study that up or gotta play this more patient thing. Um, so I'll give this some thought and we'll probably see this in a future teaching ladder sometime. Yeah, interesting game. Yeah, it's called Tower Mino as well as, uh, yeah. And it's good to avoid the bishop diagonal. Yeah, that is really cool. Like, as much, like, I've tried playing Static Rook. I like this, though. Like, this doesn't require you to commit to Static Rook. You could play the Rook over as you did in the game. And I think that harmonizes with the Knight, Silver, and Bishop a lot better on this file. Or other files, honestly. I just don't think on its original file the Rook is in harmony with the other pieces. So thanks again for this very good game and lesson. I'm kind of a beatdown, but I kind of deserved it. So this is the point of the teaching ladder. You play against lower rated and higher rated opponents. And you have a good discussion and you learn things together. So uh, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.